and welcome to this week's Community Craft Corner. We have some fun stuff to do tonight on tonight's show. We're going to carry on with a Mother's Day theme. Last week we did the memory boxes. And oh, I want to remind you too, uh, start looking through your closets for Father's Day for those old ties that you just can't stand to wear anymore. We're going to be using them in a couple of weeks for the Father's Day segment. And uh, we're going to take recycling to a whole new level with those old ties. Um, on today's show, we have Jeff Kimmis, and he's going to be here. He's showed us some, some wonderful things. He's showing us some of the wonderful things that he has been making, and uh, he'll have those on the show. And also, we've got some origami. So get your kids in front of the TV, get some paper, square it off, and get ready to do some origami at the end of the show. Anyway, to get started with today's project, actually, I have a few projects. Today, we're going to call it um, Potpourri. And we're gonna, we did, we worked with potpourri a few weeks ago. And just a second, I forgot something. Here it is. Okay. Ready? This is potpourri. That's potpourri. Potpourri. It's potpourri. This is the word of the day. So when you go and ask for potpourri, not potpourri, my husband works in a store where he says people always come in and ask for potpourri. This is potpourri. Anyway, to get on with it, I've got a few suggestions here of what you can do with potpourri besides making the potpourri bunnies. We've got, for Mother's Day that is, we've got some sachets here that I've made. And of course, you know, this probably wouldn't be too appropriate for Father's Day. I don't think too many men like putting these sachets in there lingerie drawer, but we're going to make these. These are just real easy to make. You can mass produce these for all your friends who are also moms or, you know, your own mom or grandma. And um, what it basically is, just to give you an idea here of a couple of the ones that I've made, is I've just taken some wide lace, and this is how I usually wrap up my scraps of lace. I've got some wide lace, and you want to, it depends on the, how wide your lace is, and that will depend on how big your sachet is. And then you just uh, fold it right sides together, and then also put a little netting on it if your uh, lace is kind of wide woven. Put some mesh on there, and then you sew around it, and all you have to do is you just turn it inside out, or right side out, I should say. And then you take a ribbon, and I have a ribbon here, and you would just uh, thread it through uh, d using a running stitch and then just close it shut. And then here I've got some um, mulberry. This is some mulberry potpourri. And in this one I have some rose. They smell really nice. This is just a nice little touch that you get. In fact, this would be nice on a, um, a bridal shower on the, on the outside of the package. That would be a good idea too. So that's one idea that you can do with potpourri for Mother's Day. Here's another idea that um, was given to me by my sister-in-law. She made one of these for me, and she used a regular curd jar, and she filled it up with some potpourri, and then she put a scrap of muslin and some lace and some raffia tied bow, and on the top here, some buttons and some little square scraps. That's kind of cute. Here's one that I came up with, too. And this one, <coughs> the next two jars that I'm going to show you are spaghetti jars, and uh, for some reason those spaghetti jars, spaghetti jars are becoming uh, very pretty. They're starting to uh, not be so plain anymore. And in this one, I just took a piece of material and uh, put a little batting on the top of it and put some buttons on, too, kind of following the idea of my sister-in-law. And with this next one that I'm going to show you, it's really easy just to show you how to make one of these. And this one is the new Barilla pasta sauce. This is a real pretty jar. It has Italian on here. Real pretty. And all you have to do is just put some potpourri in there. I'm going to usually have a bag of potpourri laying around somewhere in the house. <coughs> and you can fill it as much as you want. Uh, we'll just fill it about that high. And if you want, you can punch some holes on the top here of your uh, top of your jar. And that way some of the potpourri smell will come through. I'm not going to do that tonight. And you put your top on, and then you take a little piece of batting, a circle like this. And for this one, I've decided to use a little doily. And I'll just put this on the top of that, kind of smooth out the edges, and center that doily on top of the jar. Move this a little bit. Then I just take a rubber band like this. It makes it a lot easier. Newfangled things like rubber bands. And just kind of even out that doily. And then for this one, I 
You could put it whatever you want around the top here. If you happen to have some old lace, you could do that. This one I'm just going to, for time's sake, just going to put a ribbon on here. You see that this is a real cute little idea that you can put up on your knickknack shelf. It has kind of an antique look to it. I especially love this jar. So that's another idea that you can do with potpourri. And lastly, for tonight's show, I want to show you how to do these potpourri wreaths. And these are a little bit more time consuming, but the end product is so nice. I've got this one here, um, which has the green, and then I think this is a fuchsia color. After I got this done and, and hung it up on my wall to take a look at it, I stood back from it for a little bit and I thought, hmm, those look like crunch berries. And <laughs> they do. So this is a, a green wreath. This one here that I finished is going to be going to a friend of mine. She had just redone her dining room. And I called her up, and she doesn't know that this is for her yet. Um, I called her up, and I asked her if I could have a piece of the wall border that she used in her dining room. She did have a couple scraps left, so I just cut it up and made it into a ribbon. This has a real Victorian feel to it, and some of the theme of her dining room, oops, got one straggling down here, is fruit. So I've got this, this potpourri is called apple spice, and then I have some dried apples glued in here as a, as, as a special touch. Also, um, some of these potpourri things, let me see if I can find one in, in this one here. I, I don't see one, maybe there's one in here. Some of these potpourri uh, flowers, these dried flowers, oh, there's not one out here, um, like this one right here, and there's some dark ones in here too. These should be registered as lethal weapons. <laughs> They're very sharp, especially when you're... Um, trying to press down the potpourri. So if anybody's trying to break into your house, all you have to do is grab your wreath and beat him with it, and he'll go running out of the house screaming, because these are really, really sharp. So be careful when you're working with those. So anyway, how to make this. I've got just a plain old straw wreath like this one, and somebody please tell me how you get the plastic off this easy without using a meat cleaver. I, I haven't figured this out yet, because this plastic is so hard to get off. You can use this size, which is a little bit bigger than the apple spice wreath, but I've um, got a heart here that I'm going to start on, and then I'll s end off with the circle one. But you can use either tacky glue or hot glue, which is what I'm going to use, because it's a little quicker. Uh, one of the drawbacks of using tacky glue is it does take a little longer to dry, and one of the drawbacks of using this hot glue is it does have strings on it, so you have to after you're done, pick out some of the strings. And how you get started with this, it's real easy. I take my potpourri and I put it in a bowl so that my um, wreath will fit in there. And I go ahead and just put gobs on. <laughs> Technical word again. I'm going to be called the gob lady here pretty quick. <laughs> and you just put a gob on here and you press it into the potpourri. And it'll come out like this. And then you just want to go ahead and Press some more on there, grab some, and the, some of those will fall off. Just go ahead and keep pressing them on. And after a while, you'll kind of get the idea how to fill in the spaces. And you'll get the top done if you keep doing that. You can go around with your hand, but I find this easier just to go ahead and press like this. And I have one that's done all the way through on the top. Get some strings here wild strings here. And this one is already done all the way around on the top. And the one thing that I found about doing these um, potpourri wreaths, it's almost like a jigsaw. When you get to the sides, it's a little harder to press them into the potpourri. So what I've done is I just kind of pick out some of the bigger flowers and I go ahead and fill in the spaces. Like on this one, I stick this here. And you just go all the way around, filling in, right, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, really. You get to pick the colors that you like. And one of the nice things about doing the, um, the potpourri this way is that it gives it a real random feel. And that is how you make a potpourri. And don't worry about getting those glared air freshener things. You put one of these on your wall, and your whole room will smell wonderful for a real long time. And that is our project for this week. I hope you enjoy making this. It's a lot of fun, and it really is a beautiful product. And our
our guest for this week's Community Craft Corner is Jeff Chemist. And Jeff is a busy man, but you had this week off, didn't you? Pretty much. Yeah, that's kind of nice. What did you do for your vacation? I worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, you work on this, but you also, where do you work? At, where do you work? I work at Walmart. At Walmart. And mm -hmm. I have another part-time job. What oh, do you really? Plus this. Plus this. So you oh. are a very busy man. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I know that you, the word is getting around about the things that you're making with the wood. Um, I first saw your flyer, and then I saw these in the radio station, in the window. They were sold on the auction, and when I saw this stuff, I thought, oh, i got to get Jeff on the show, and you were so nice to come on. Why don't we go ahead and just um, explain some of the things. Now, you have this one, but you also had another one, didn't you, that was... It didn't have the two sitting in there. It was a little different, wasn't it? I have this or one. Or maybe it was that one. And then I have this one here. Okay, well, let's do this one first. Okay. Now, what is this made out of? Okay, these are made out of pine. Out of pine? And then I soak them in the regular oil. So they're finished in oil. Oh, Danish oil. Okay. And, uh, and this one you have the two pots in yep. here? Yep. They have okay. two six inch pots in them. And is this mm. the size that you make with all of yours? Yep. Okay. My size are the size now, here. Now, I know a certain somebody who bought this for, not for her plants, but for her dog, so that her dog didn't have to go all the way down to the floor to get his water. <laughs> well, I guess, you know, whatever. <laughs> as long as they put out the money, right? But this would be so cute on somebody's porch or... Um, you know, if you have a, something close to the window, that'd be so cute. And what do these sell for? I sell these for fifteen ninety five. Fifteen ninety five. Mm -hmm. well, that's yeah. well worth it. Do you, are they going to let you have these out of Walmart too? Yep, I'll be out in the Walmart parking lot pretty soon with them. Do you? Are you mass producing these a lot? No, I got lots of them. Do you have you now? What would be your inventory? I will have at the end of the week about a hundred or so. Wow, of this one. Yep. Just this Just one. Just this one here. Wow, and I'm putting in my in order. <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> Let me get my piece of paper. I'm putting in my order. Okay, these are so cute. Okay, let's why don't you go ahead and um, let's move this. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna put this down here. We'll put a get a shot of all of them at the end. Number, let's see, seven times. Okay, we have a running count of how many times I've lost my mic or my <laughs> guests have lost. So don't lose your mic. And I, I think the crew is putting money in your bedding. Okay, now this one okay, is this made is, out of? This is made out of pine. Out of pine? Mm -hmm. Now this is a, a different finish. How did you finish this? I wood burn these here. You wood burn this? Yes. How do you do that? I wood burn it with a torch. And I also do that with those planters there. And no kidding. Mm -hmm. And this isn't not finished in oil, is it? No, it's not finished at all. People that buy these, they varnish them themselves. Oh, okay, okay. And, they and prefer you put to. your plants in here? Yeah, you can set the plants in there or else they hold three pots. Six-inch pots will sit right in there. Oh, okay, so you can put three six-inch pots in there. All right, let me, let's just turn this around a little bit. Get a, yeah, let's go this way. Isn't that it? This is a new one this year, and a lot of people are buying them for cemetery baskets. What a great idea, especially if they finish them well. Right. What a great idea. Great idea. And Memorial Day is coming mm -hmm. up, too. Well, um, why don't you go ahead and give yourself a plug. What's your phone number? It's 384-9874. 9874. Right. 9874. Eight, 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 a lot of people do in. call me, so I go to the houses and show my stuff, actually. Do you really? Yep, and I've done very well that way. Really? And you are also in lots of craft shows, too, are A lot aren't of craft you? shows. You have heard that you do real well in craft shows. It's the craft shows where people ask for these, actually. Really? The last two years, and I finally found the plans, and I got into it this year, and they're doing pretty wow, well. These are so beautiful. Now, you sand these all down. Do you have a table sander? Yep, sander, router. Oh, that's nice. These are so nice. And and this one over here is my favorite one, because... Give me the camera shot, Eric. <laughs> give me the shot. I want a close-up here. <laughs> I want one of these. I have to look my husband straight in the eye because he doesn't know, but I want one of these planters here. Go ahead and grab that one. Well, these are really pretty. And you have a basket. Can I take this basket out sure. for a second? Sure. They okay. come right over there. Okay. Let me show how these are made. Now, where do you find the plants for these? Okay, you can go to uh, any store and buy them, and they hold 8 inch or 10 inch plants. Mm, okay. And d is this the only size you make, or do you make them bigger or smaller? I used to make small ones, but the wind blows the plants out of them. So this is my biggest seller, and that's what I'm down to now. Oh, really? 
Oh, and, and how long does one of these take you to make? It takes me about 45 minutes to do one. Really? Yeah, that's if I mass produce them oh, a lot at a time. Okay. That's not so bad. And what, what is this made out of? These are made out of pine also. Uh, pine? And finished in oil. Finished in oil. And these ones I sell after the spray, these are completely finished. Oh, okay. I spray these. Okay. Let me see if I can get that yeah. Okay. That's really nice. That is really nice. These are the ones that started getting me going on my craft shows about four years ago. Really? So this, this was your item. very first, first thing one. that you started on? Did you come up with this plan yourself or did you get a plan? No, we started? bought one from somebody and then he quit making them and I started making them for presents and stuff and all of a sudden just poof. People were on and it hit, and it hit it really big. And in about mm, a couple of years here. That'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, I want to get a shot of, let me put the plants back in here. We can get, now, where are you located at? I live in Renshaw. In Renshaw? Mm -hmm. Okay. And your number once again was what? It's 384-9874. Let's put this over here. I want to get one more of this one over here. Let's see if we can... Well, I don't know how we can do this. But maybe we can get a shot like this. Okay. Yeah, these are really nice. Well, Jeff, I hope this gets the word out a little bit more. And this is such beautiful work. You will be at... Well, there's the camera. Honey. I want one of these. <laughs> I want one of these, the baskets. Thanks. <laughs> I wanted to make sure you got that. You, are, you're going to have your stuff at Walmart, at the Cloquet Walmart, yep. right? And you also have stuff at your shop, and you're going to be at local craft shows. Mm -hmm. Anyone in particular soon? Uh, it'll be quite a while before I'll be up in this area. Oh, really? So but I'll be at the Walmart go? stores most of May. Oh, will you? Yeah, weekends mm -hmm. in May. And Mother's Day. Right. Mother's Day. Honey? That's my big weekend. Yeah. Um, how far south do you go? How, how, how far out do you go? I've got all the way down to La Crosse, Wisconsin. Really? And way down to 200 miles south of Duluth. Wow. So do you really down do Rochester quite a range. And well, these are really nice. Thank you, Jeff, for coming on the well, show. Well, thank you for inviting me. I it appreciate it. It was fun, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Great. Thanks. Well, this week's uh, Crafts for Kids program, we had to call in a favor again because we had a last-minute cancellation, not cancellation, but schedule conflict. So I called in my oldest daughter again, and she's got her friend, who is? Jamie. Jeremy. Jeremy. Ferguson. Ferguson. And Brianna has always been really good at folding paper, and she loves to do origami, so I thought this would be a good chance for her to come on the show and uh, show kids how to do origami. I hope you have your paper ready. But before we do this, Brianna, why don't we go ahead and show them how you square up a piece of paper. If you've got a piece of paper like this. Any piece of paper. Any piece of paper. You can square it up by taking this corner and running along the edge to make a diamond or a triangle. And then you just cut off this excess piece. So you can use it later and make smaller origami things. Square that up and square that up and there you go. And that's how you get a square piece of paper for origami. Okay? Okay, Brianna. Show is yours. Okay. You're going to show us how to make what? Um, it's a Japanese water bomb and in Japanese schools they used to take it and they used to play catch with it because school was so boring like it is now. It's not boring. We yeah. like school, don't we? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So why don't we, where, do we, where do we start? Okay, you start by folding it diagonal like it was already squared up. Okay. And then you open it up and you fold it diagonal the other way. Okay. Jeremy, you got enough room on the table there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you want to make what? All your points match? Yeah. Okay. And then... Another step is you can just take any side and fold it across so that it's like Mr. Otterson says, hot dog ways. Like what? Hot dog ways. Oh. <laughs> Alrighty. Then what? And then you take it, this is just kind of a tricky part. You okay. take it and you fold this part in and then you fold this in like that. And yeah, and then you And then do the same on the other side? Um, no. You just, they are going to do the same thing. 
Looks like that. You got it. I don't. First time. <laughs> Get it? Oh. Got it. Got it. Okay. Not as easy as it looks, is it? No. Mm -hmm. okay. Get your turn. Okay. Can I get there? And crease. Well, mm -hmm. you always have to crease the lines so that they're flat so they can be easier. Alright. Now what? And then you take the corners, like, either one, and you fold them up so that the corner matches to the top corner. Okay. And then you do the same on the other side. Alright. And then you turn it over and you do the same, like... Okay, and turn it over and do it on the same side, um, mm -hmm. same on the other side? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright. And as soon as you get that done... Did you get it, Jeremy? Did you, turn, did you finish yeah. it? Okay, yeah. and you want to make sure all your points are mm -hmm. nice and... Crease. Crease. That's it. Alright. Then what? If you have long fingernails, it's easy, but I cut mine. Okay. And then you take one of the corners on this side. Which side? Now how do we know which is which? Oh, the line is up like this, so you have your... Yeah, yeah. Well, it here. doesn't matter. It you doesn't matter? Like that or that or... But as long as your line's going up and down? Yeah. Okay. Then you take it and you fold one side over to the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but... It doesn't have to be perfect? Mm -mm. But, me but of course, you like yours perfect. Not really. <laughs> I don't like my own perfect. Well, that's for sure. Okay. And then you turn it over. All right. And do the same on the other side. Now, what? Mine is a little short. Is that okay? Yeah. <coughs> Does have to How about yours, again? Jeremy? That's fine. <coughs> All right. Looks a little bit like a boat, but not like a boat? quite. Okay. Like now that. what? And then you put it down, and I know kids get mixed up with this. You don't do this then, so you have Which to make side? it. Which side? This one with the things flapping the up? Flappy things. Okay. You can go like this. Or but the difference it. being this side doesn't do that, right? Yeah. It's joined. Okay. Yeah. And you take it and you fold it up so that it's even with this, the line here. Okay. And you crease it, and you do it on the other side there. All right. Got it? Alright. Sure. Right. Sure and you do it on the other side? Mm -hmm. This side? Turn it over and you do it on the same on the other side. Okay. This is the tricky part. You're not going to grade me on this, are you? No. Okay. You're my mother, of course not. <laughs> Good answer. Okay. And then, well, this, the thing that I was even up with can open up a little bit. Okay. That Sorry. You guys are practicing this, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, what? And you open up a little bit so that it's like a little hole so you can stick your finger in there. Okay. And then I like to fold mine, but you don't have to, but it's kind of hard to stick them in stick there. Stick in there. And then... See what you mean. All right. So it does what? So it just sticks in there. Oh, you got I don't get it. Get in like that, so all of it goes in. It doesn't. So, oh, to. I see. Okay, so all of it goes in. Mine's not. Got it. There it is. Okay, I get it. So this goes in here. Just push it in there. Okay. And then you do the same with the other three. On the other side. On the other side too. Mine's gonna look really bad. <laughs> Alright. Can you flatten that out? Yep. Alright. And the same on the other side? And the same on the other side. <coughs> Jen, I see what you mean about folding it. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing in the world would probably be the cup. The what? The cup. The cup. But You've I'm been doing origami for a long time. <laughs> And, and when we get these done, we'll show some of the other things that <coughs> you can make. You didn't bring everything in, but just a few examples. Okay, now we got that. Jeremy, did you get yours? 
Christmas night. <laughs> if I was an origami class, I wouldn't get an A. You'd like, I'd like to use thin paper, but this is the thinnest stuff I have, so okay. why not? You'd use thinner paper? There is a special origami paper, mm -hmm. right? You can buy it at... This, this is, is origami paper, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll show this in a minute. Okay, all right, now what? <laughs> and then as soon as that's done, well, all you have left to do is blow. Well, make sure that it's the thick side, not the thin side, but the thick side. The thick side that you blow up? Mm -hmm. All right. So you so, blow this So side. you look and see if it has a little hole, and then it's right. just... It might not go too well at first, but you might want to do this. That's not working. Did you get you? No. Now, you would think I'd be able to blow this up all the hot air I have, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Watch your answer. Why? Do you get yours, Jeremy? <laughs> oh, sure. Look at Jeremy. It's not <laughs> working. Right yeah, it is. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that might happen. Did you, you get yours? You might want to pull the sides out a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see, so this is what yeah, that's closes what the off the air. Mm -hmm. oh. But it still comes out a little bit if you don't have it. Well, let's show the finished yeah. product. Yeah. There we go. The you, you blew this up, right? Yeah, I had a hard time too. So this and goes from this to this. to this. And then if you want to, you could fill it with um, shredded paper and... <laughs> throw it at somebody. <laughs> throw it at somebody. Well, let's show a couple of these other things that you could do. And you've made a bunch of these at Christmas time where we yeah. hang them on our Christmas tree. And this is a crane. This is... Here, let's hold it up here. This is a flying crane. Okay. And if you want to make a standing crane, you just pull it out. Okay. Yeah. Why is it a flying crane? Well... Because when you move the head, it flies, right? Mm -hmm. you got to stick it out a little bit, but... Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. And then... And you can make those in all different yeah. shapes, too. It depends on the size of your paper. And this one... And this is a turtle. The Mom turtle. forgot to bring the puppet bunny, so... And it won't fit on anybody's heads. But this is kind of a neat thing. If you had a bigger piece of paper, this is like a hat. I know it won't fit on you, but... Where does it go this way? It doesn't matter. This looks like a chef's hat, though. Okay. So those are some of the different things that you can do with origami. Um, they have all kinds of books in the library. I know at Churchill School they have several books on origami. Also the public library has many books on origami. If, you're, if you think your kids might be interested in doing this, this is a really fun way. Kids love to fold paper and watch it magically turn into something. Almost. And, uh, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. You can use um, newspaper around the house like this. Just grab a piece of newspaper and um, have fun with it. And that's our project today. And that's it for tonight's show. I'd like to say a special thanks to Jeff Kimmis for bringing his woodwork on tonight and also to Brianna and Jeremy and showing us how to do origami at the end of the show. Also I want to thank Eric the Wonder Boy of the camera. He's always here. He's always faithful. He does a great job. And also Keith. He's here tonight. He's filling in for Amanda, and I'm glad to have him here to help on, out with the show. And also Mr. Jeff, who's always back in the control room making, thing, making sure that things go right. And that's it for tonight's show. Hope you had a great week. Hope you're enjoying spring if it ever gets here. And that's it, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>
Hi, and welcome to this week's Community Craft Corner. This is, believe it or not, show number 11, and we have just begun to scratch the surface of all the things that we're going to be making in the upcoming shows, which reminds me, go through your closets and look for those old ties, because coming up in just a couple of weeks, we're going to be making some Father's Day presents with those old ties that are hanging around in your closet. And uh, if you don't have enough, ask your friends. I'm sure they'll be glad to give you all the ties that they have. On today's show, on this week's show, we have Betty Brown. I'm so excited that she's going to be here. I have the highest regard for her. She's going to be in our guest segment and also in our kids' craft segment. She's got a special project just for the kids um, dealing with watercolors. And so I'm really excited to have her on the show this evening. But for our project this evening, I find that when I'm thinking about things, what to make on the show, I find that uh, things that I need around the house sometimes pop up as a subject for the show. So this week's project is going to be this shelf. And what this is, is like a stair stringer, um, but I needed, I redid my upstairs, oh, last year or so, and I have nothing on my walls going up the stairs. So um, I've got this shelf that I wanted to share with you. It's a, I guess I should turn it around here. It's a really neat shelf. It's got these little um, shelves, and as you can see, it will go right up the stairs. And you can put on here your favorite knickknacks if your kids are older and you're not afraid of them breaking everything, or you can put some other things on there. This is kind of a neat project. And what you need to do this is just a piece of wood. Now, what I used <coughs> was just a plain, I wainscoted my kitchen, and I used a cabin grade wainscoting, and I used the scraps from that to make a couple of shelves for my going upstairs for the, the hallway there. And all you need is a, a scrap piece of wood like this, or if you want to go to the lumber yard, you can get yourself a nice piece. But this is um, fairly narrow, I'd say a quarter inch wide. And you can make this any dimension that you want. You can have it long, short, wide, narrow. But the basic idea of how to make it is the same. What you do is you make it just like you would a stair stringer with the 7-11 marks, except for this stair, I use 3-4 measurements instead of the 7-11 when you're making stair stringers. And instead of bringing my big bulky carpenter square, I decided to uh, cut down the three, four inch marks and I put them on my square. And I highlighted them with whiteout, fairly easy, so that I could uh, use three inches and four inches. And when you uh, measure it on the wood, <coughs> you take your square and you go along one edge of the wood. Now I've decided to use this edge of the wood because the back edge of the wood has a fairly nice finish, but on the front it's kind of rough and that just gets sawed off anyway. So you take your measurement like this and what you do is you match up your point. I've already gotten one started here. This is three inches and this is four inches. So what you do is you line up your marks. If I can do this so you can see it clearly. Here's three inches and on the edge of that point, and there is the four. And you just make a mark, just like you would if you've done, if you've made a stair stringer before. It's the same basic idea. You make your mark, and you do it the same thing. Now on this shelf, I'm using, I have four shelves, and you go along, and you mark it. Okay. And that's how it looks when you get it all measured out. You'll have the four stairs. And now it looks kind of odd when you're looking at it. When my husband first saw it, he says, what the heck is that? But once you get it on the wall, it makes a lot more sense. After you cut it out, and you can use your tool of choice, you can use your hacksaw, your jigsaw, or like Norman, the uh, New York Yankee, or the New Yankee workshop. Um, you can have some of those fancy tools. This is what it looks like when you get it all cut out. And for the shelves, for the little shelves that I have here, what I did was I took the piece of scrap that I had and I cut right along this bead. And I'm using this as the front. So I cut right along this bead here, the second bead, so that I'd have a little notch for the front of the shelf. And then I just rounded it off. And on the back, because I've got one finished here, Here's what it looks like when you get it all cut out. You've got this little notch. And on the back of this, this is tongue and groove. So what I've done is I take off this back part here, and usually they break off fairly cleanly. Or you can use a straight edge or a, a razor and get that off. 
so that you have this like L. And I'll, why I did that when I put it on the shelf is because it will give you a little more surface area when you glue your shelf on. So you just stick it on there and you will glue it. Now I didn't bring my shoe polish like I did with the, uh, r the yardstick shelves, but on this shelf you can see that I used the um, shoe polish and that gives it a nice finish. The same thing would go for this one. This one I've got, I was going to shoe polish this for you and I forgot my shoe polish, but I do have the little shelves done. And when I measure for the shelves, I go along and I literally take my piece of wood that I've got for the shelf and I measure and I measure and I measure because I found out that each shelf is a little different and if you use the same measurement for each shelf, they don't always fit. So this one, and then on the back, I just number them four and four. And then I put glue here and I glue it on to this. And this does anything. And you'll find that it makes a nice sturdy shelf. You'll glue four. And this is number one. So each one of these would go on here with the glue, like we did in the uh, show a few weeks back when we did the yardstick sh um, shelf. And as when it all dries, this is what it looks like as the finished product. And once again, I'm going to put it up on the wall so it can kind of make sense to you. We. Uh, put it on the wall and you put it on an incline. Now, I have four girls, so I'm going to put each one of their pictures on here as they're going up the stairs. And then I want to put up another one, you know, their baby picture and then maybe their six-year picture and maybe their graduation picture if that day ever comes. So we've got um, four shelves and that's our project for today. It's, it's really easy. It looks complicated, but it's really easy and it's a lot of fun and it's a real unique thing to put on your wall if you're going up the stairs. Coming up next, we've got Betty Brown with our guest segment and also our Crafts for Kids segment. Well, for our guest segment this week, I am so thrilled. We have Betty Brown from Betty D. Brown Studio, and I admire your work so much. I've seen your work through town. And I can't tell you, I, you have such beautiful work. Sometimes I just stand and look and look because you have so much detail and it's so beautiful. We, we were talking a little bit before. Um, you were saying that you, this is mostly self-taught. Yes. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, I've learned a tremendous amount from books and I've also gone to uh, a lot of workshops with professional artists that have taught me a lot of tricks about painting and watercolor. Yeah, and watercolor is a tricky thing, but uh, the thing about watercolor that's nice is that it kind of takes on its own life once in a while. Yes, and that's what's very challenging about painting with it. You mm -hmm. never know exactly what it's going to do, so it's more fun, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really exciting to paint with. Well, I, I tell you what, I'm, we're going to let you go ahead and get started. You are going to paint us, or you're going to be the Bob Ross of Cat 7. <laughs> Oh, heavens. <laughs> you are going to be painting a picture here on the show, and as you're doing that, we're just going to talk a little bit. And, and okay. I also, I, before we go, I want to make sure that we get some of the other uh, prints that you've brought here. Not prints, but these are original. These are original paintings. Um, most of them are things that I've done as demonstrations mm -hmm. for my classes. I teach classes a couple of times right. a year, right. and uh, that's what most of these are, except the larger ones are things that I have, um, I've been working a lot in, in abstract collage type watercolor oh. and that's what some of these are, the larger ones. Now, I'm going to pull are. this one up here mm -hmm. just for a second so we can, maybe, this is beautiful. This uh, was done by um, masking out the daisies with masking tape first. Oh, okay. And then I washed color over the background and... It's got texture too, I like that. Put in some rice paper. Some of it was done with saran wrap. Yeah, and I see that. The, mm -hmm. Oh, saran wrap, really. And, and there's, there's gold, gold paint in there. There's just all kinds of you things. You know, this is a picture I could just stand and look at for mm -hmm. forever. You well, know. It's, it's just all kinds of fun to yeah. do, too. <clears throat> and there's one other one here that, oh, this one too. This one is just gorgeous, too. Now, this, now this really has, has the texture. rice paper, too, and it has some extra pieces of watercolor paper that are actually torn and pasted on top to, oh, okay. to now part of the design. How do you get the... Oh, and what's this right here? It's rice paper. Really? It comes in that color. Wow. And uh, then the splatter is just white paint splattered over the top afterwards. Isn't that beautiful? See, that's another one where you could look at it for yes. hours. And that, this would be a good one. I don't, I don't want to be rude or anything at the risk of saying, but put this in the bathroom and you, you'd be, <laughs> keep yourself busy for a long time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, well, we'll show a couple of the other prints, but I want you to go ahead and get started here. So okay, we I said I was going to do this painting in five minutes, and I guess... Did you practice, or...? Well, I have done several have you? of them in five minutes. Okay. Uh, I have it sketched out. It's just a pile of rocks with some sky and a couple of trees here, another little tree here, and a water line, line back okay. down there. And I'm going to start with the sky. Okay. Now this one inch brush is the brush that I use the most of all oh, really? when I'm painting. Um, I can do a lot in a big hurry with a brush this size. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to wash a little bit of clear water on there first. And I'm going to take a little bit of um, raw sienna. Okay. And I'm going to just wash in a little of that. And then I'm going to take some... Um, Rose matter, genuine. Okay. And put a little of that in there and no, let it blend where? together right on the page. Where do you get your art supplies at? Oh, I order most of them through um, wholesale companies. Oh, do you? Yeah, it's it's much cheaper than trying to buy things locally. Yeah. When I buy in quantity. And then, and then the, I can buy, um, you know, artist grade, professional grade much more easily. Mm hmm than what you can get it locally. Either. Right, and and that's a shame because uh, Cloquet is losing one of its great craft stores, at least, the white right. store. Right. And I, I think that's too bad. I think it is, too. I know, I did a lot of shopping there. Now, I've got probably a little more color here than I want, so I'm going to take a Kleenex, okay. and I'm just going to um, wash off a little of it. Oh, okay. I'll, so if I wanted to put a little cloud up in here, I could just take the wadded up Kleenex like this and uh, make a cloud. Oh, isn't that pretty? Then I'm going to start on the rocks. Now when I paint rocks, I make a dark brownish gray by using uh, ultramarine blue mm -hmm. and burnt sienna. Okay. And by mixing these two colors together, I get a deep, rich, oh, brownish sure gray. Yeah. And um, I'm just going to wash that on these rock areas here. And I'm not making any particular effort to paint the individual rocks right now because I'm going to do something really different here as soon as I get this painted on. Okay. Now, your studio is right in Carleton, right? right. I kept yeah. saying ESCO when I was talking no, to you. No, no. <laughs> I don't know if I had a mental block. But you're right in Right Carleton. on the main street. And you have your own studio. Yes, my studio and gallery are together. And when are you open? I'm open on Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays mm -hmm. from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. And starting in June, I'll be open from Tuesday through Saturday. Oh, I bet you when they have the white water rafting and things like yeah, that, you get well, real busy. Yeah, well, we have the, the Jacob Park oh, and Munger sure. Bike Trail there, so there are a lot sure. of people coming through. Now something interesting is happening here because my sky wasn't quite dry and I don't want it to happen, so I'm just going to blot that a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to take an old credit card. Okay. Which we should cut up all our credit cards. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one use for a credit card that won't cost you any money at all. And I'm going to make my rocks with a credit card. Oh. And I'm just going to push the pigment around. Oh, look at that. And when I get done here, it's going to look like a pile of rocks. Isn't that interesting? Now, I'd have never known that's how you did that. Well, this is something that always gets a lot of oohs and ahs in my oh, classes. Oh, sure. And when I give out my list of supplies and it says they're supposed <laughs> to bring an old credit card, then, <laughs> why? <laughs> Isn't that a dramatic effect? And it makes, uh, like, the crevices in oh, the rocks. Oh, sure. Now, I've kind of got it all sort of gray, so I'm going to wash in a little color here, too. Okay. I'll get a little of this pink going down in here. Okay. And uh, maybe a little of the raw sienna, too. By using the colors throughout the painting, the same ones, you unify the painting. Okay. And it looks um, oh, sure. like it all goes together much better. Isn't this beautiful? Now, I also can do something here with a little bit of salt. And this is kosher salt, so it's coarser than regular table salt. Okay, like you put on pretzels? Mm-hmm. On the soft pretzels? Yeah. Okay. And uh, by just putting a little of that in there, the individual kernels of salt each absorb a little bit of pigment so mm -hmm. that it makes a kind of a crackled look. Like you have in, in those other prints that we were looking yes. at before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to have to do some trees here rather quickly because I think my five minutes. Oh, just you're doing up. fine. You're doing great. <laughs> I'm I'll have to have to, you on uh, again. I'll have to uh, get some green. Uh, this is olive green. Okay. And I'm going to mix a little bit of this rock color mixture in with that. Okay. Maybe just a hair more blue. And I'm still using my big brush, but now I'm using, as you can see, the tip of it. Uh huh. And I'm um, just doing the foliage now on these evergreens, just by flicking the brush around and getting some different angles here. Uh -huh. I've got two trees here. And I see you're leaving up <coughs> quite a bit open. Yes, because you can actually usually see quite a bit of uh, sky through an evergreen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I need to mention too that you do you take beautiful pictures. Well, I do a lot of photography, and I started out doing photography because I wanted some reference material for my painting, but 10,000 photos later, you oh. better do something <laughs> with the photos. So I started putting them on note cards oh. and um, And you said that those that are, way. you take pictures of your paintings, and you also have the pictures yes, there yourself? Yes, I, I do that too. Wow. And the, um, and these photo collages I have over here are done with my photos too. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. We'll, sh we'll give another shot of those at the end yeah, of the show I have show another um, little tree here. Oh, my trees see. are getting a little wild looking. <laughs> well, up here in the Northland, you know. Well, some of mine. Yeah. yeah. And if they're a little crooked leaning towards the west, it's because the east wind never quits, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Have we hit spring yet? No, I don't think so. I've seen the robins, but doesn't For two weeks like I've been trying to take my class out to oh. do some sketching on location, and it, it has cold. not cooperated at all. <laughs> well, okay. I keep trying to plant my beans outside. Now all i got to do is get my horizon line in here. <coughs> and you're using what color with that? This is cobalt blue. Cobalt. I've got a little contamination in my brush here. I see it's kind of a greenish blue, but that's all right. It's a stormy day. Maybe. The water doesn't always look clear blue. Okay, now all i got to do is put in my two, three little birds up here. Ooh, I think the sky is dry enough to do that. So I'll just... Um, I think you came pretty darn close to five minutes. Maybe. I think so. Oh, no, isn't there. that pretty? Oh, that's so pretty, Betty. I'm so impressed. It's, um, I love the rocks with the credit card. Yeah, aren't they? Yeah. 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 I think they are. But now the uh, the salt is starting to work, but it takes probably five or ten minutes mm -hmm. for it to work properly. Well, this and, is wonderful. Um, I think I still need a little bit of color in those rocks. They're a little okay. drab looking. So I'm going to put a little bit oh, more. Oh, sure. There Up on go. the North Shore, you know, they look kind of rusty anyway with mm -hmm. all those lichens on. So <laughs> we'll just put a few of those in there. There. How mm -hmm. wonderful. It's going to drip if I hold it up. Mm-hmm. There. It's beautiful. Okay. Wow. I'm so thrilled you were here and I got to see you work as you work. That's nice. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you hold up a couple of your boxes of um, greeting cards first before we okay. get to the kids segment. These are um, all photos of the North Shore. Okay. I have 12 different ones in a, in a box. And that must have taken you quite a while to put those well, together. Well, th it's something I do in the evenings when I'm sitting watching TV. Mm -hmm. It's completely mindless work. I can put 75 of them together in an evening without wow. knowing I'm 75 boxes? No, 75 oh. cards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> These oh, are all are landscapes here. Oh. Well, you have such a gift. Just well, a I'm gift. I'm very grateful for my gift, yeah. and I try to share it with other people, and so I do teach classes, and I also just let people come in and paint with me when I'm there in the afternoons mm -hmm. and so forth, and we just have a good time. These are all abstract paintings here. Oh, pretty. So um, I do a large variety. I guess that's the one thing that people are most interested in when they come into my gallery is the all variety. the variety of yeah. my work because they said most people either do landscapes or they do florals or they do abstracts and they say you do all of them and I yeah. said because I'm easily bored. <laughs> <laughs> well this has been just wonderful. We're going to um, break away here so we can get um, set up for the, the Crafts right. for Kids segment because you are going to be yes. the special person for that this evening yes, too. Yes I am. 
But thank you so much for bringing in this work too. You're so we're, with that, we're going to go ahead and break away, and we'll be right back with the Crafts for Kids segment with Betty Brown. <laughs> Well, for our kids segment today, we're going to just continue with Betty Brown, and she has Keith and Peter, right? And she's going to show us something that the kids can do as far as watercolor, and it's uh, real fun techniques that the kids can do. And uh, they've got something here that they've already started. I'm going to just step back, and I'm going to let Betty explain what she does here. Okay. I sent uh, pieces of watercolor paper home with these boys, and uh, they've worked out a design on the watercolor paper, and then I told them to cover the design with masking tape. And masking tape can be cut or torn and used in strips or however. And maybe if you each want to hold up your design here, you can see on the camera what they've done. And here we've got, like, Saturn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yours is abstract? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's the word. Okay. <laughs> now, um, by masking out this with the masking tape, this part will stay white. And uh, they can paint freely on this. So I'm just going to tell them both to paint with whatever colors they want to use here and do the whole background. Just wash on the color. Okay. Go right and ahead. The water's right up there on that table. And then after they get some paint on, if I can get my um, saran wrap apart here, we can lay some uh, saran wrap on top and um, get some other interesting designs with it. I think you need a little more water, Keith. Try and get a little more water into the uh, paint there. It's a little bit dry. It's probably dried out with all the lights. Okay, and I see that Peter's picking a nice color oh, there. Oh, bright red, right. Yeah. And just wash it on any way you want to. Okay, and this is something that they can just do at random? Yes. Okay. Um, Last January, I was in Peter's classroom at South Terrace School and did this project with Peter's mom and two other helpers for the whole third grade section. And uh, then they had an art exhibit out in the hallway afterwards oh. of everything they had done. It was a lot of fun. Everybody enjoyed it, including me. Yeah. Are you using just regular water paper, watercolor paper? Watercolor paper, okay. yes. And this is to show you how the project starts. Mm -hmm. Now, I also had each boy um, do one ahead of time and okay. paint them and so that I can show how it ends up. Okay, <laughs> why don't we go ahead and... Um, well, we'll let them paint yeah, for another yeah. minute or so, yes. We use the white of the paper mm -hmm. as the white, and it, um, using the masking tape preserves that. Right. Now, if you want to leave those go, or I can show a little bit here. Yeah, go ahead and show the, a little bit of the saran. the saran wrap. Okay. Um, do you want to lay some of that over it so you can see what kind of a design? I'll put a little bit more in Why there Why don't we first. have you come over here just a little bit? And go ahead, Betty. There you go. I'll see what happens with oh, the saran sure. wrap. It makes a really neat design. Oh, yeah. And you have to li leave that on there until it's dry. Oh, until it's dry. And then it will, oh. um, you know, the design will be there. It will stay there. Okay. I thought you picked it up. It was like a sponge, but no, you just leave it there until it's you dry. You leave it there until it's dry. Well, and I'll get dry some fairly quickly. here, too. So that's one of the things you can do. And this, this is just with things you have around your house. Mm -hmm. The... Uh, and we love those kind of crafts, yes, don't we? Yes. <laughs> the only thing you would have to get would be like a little of the heavier watercolor mm -hmm. paper. And that's uh, pretty readily available in student grade in uh, almost any place where you can pick up craft items. Okay. Now, do you want to work into the... Yeah, uh, let's go ahead and do the... Uh, ones that you did before. Okay. I'm going to pick these up, and you guys can... Oh, I like that. I like with the blue. <laughs> we'll have oh, to finish it yeah. some other time. Okay, we're going to give you back the ones that you started before, okay. and then um, if we can have those markers over there. Sure. I'll, I'll move the paint here. Okay. And you can work with the markers now. Keith needs to take his um, masking tape okay. off, the part he had masked out before. Okay. And Peter has already done that with his. So what you can do is take um, 
Oh, he's got his initials in there, I see. Oh. And Keith has a constellation, I believe. What, what constellation is that? Delphidus. Oh, okay. You're like an astronomer kind of person, huh? Yes, he's kind of into What do you think astronomy. about that comet that just went by? Did you hmm. get a chance to see it? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, Keith has a, a telescope. Oh, my daughter wants one of those. Here, I'll take those. Okay, now you can choose your, your yeah, markers. Let's up a little bit and see if we can... And, um, Come on back here for a second. There you go. And you can mark, do outline or whatever with the markers. Okay, go ahead. So this is uh, another end to the project. So mm -hmm. you can see how it begins and how it ends. Okay, does this marker bleed through on the paper at all? No, no, no it okay. shouldn't because the paper is dry. Okay. I like, and you must have used salt in this one, huh? Mm -hmm. That gives it a real yes, gelatin. <laughs> or Galactic. Galactic, that's it. Yes. Gal it's, a, it's funny how your mind it goes, It sort of you looks know? like the Milky Way out there. Yeah. And Peter's kind of looks like a flag with, yeah, with his initials on. Well, that looks, and this was watercolor paint too, huh? Mm -hmm. or, no, that looks that's like tempera. That's tempera, yeah. I believe. That looks yeah. like tempera. He, uh, Peter had tempera at home, and Keith is my grandson, and he was working in my studio with him. Oh, okay. So he had used my So you didn't say piece. that now. He's your grandson. Yes. Aren't you proud of your grandma? Yes. She's a pretty great lady, <laughs> isn't she? My grandchildren like to come into the studio. Oh, I bet. I bet. My kids love to get a hold From of them. From the time they stuff. can, well, his little sister is going on three. She loves to paint two now already. So mm -hmm. That's the first thing they want to do when they come into grandma's studio is paint. Oh, <laughs> sure. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Seems only natural. This is just something that um, it's easy to do mm -hmm. around. And they around can make the their own designs, and mm -hmm. when it's all done, they can hang it up in their room. Right, or on the refrigerator. There you go. I have I don't have room on my refrigerator anymore. <laughs> 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 I'm going to have to take down those pictures from three years back, I think. Well, thank you, Betty, for coming, and you too, Keith and Peter. Sometimes, you know, the brain goes. But I think I want to thank you guys for coming, and you too, Betty, for bringing in your beautiful pictures. And I, just to wrap up the show, I want to say a very special thank you to Betty and her two friends here for coming on with the kids or the Crafts for Kids segment, and also Betty's segment when she did the beautiful painting. Let's get one last shot of this at the end of the show. This is her painting. It's not finished. Yet, not finished yet. Yeah. But this is In the five credit. minutes. I can only begin. It. Oh, this is wonderful. The credit Would card you like idea. To hold these up so everybody yeah. can see them too. And I also want to thank Amanda for being here tonight, and we have Drew helping us tonight, and I want to thank him very much for taking time out of, or time out of their schedule to help for the Community Craft Corner. And as always, Mr. Jeff back in the control room. He does such a great job editing and, and bringing you the show that you see. I also want to thank Walmart for supplying some of the supplies that we had this evening. If you have any ideas, uh, suggestions, um, if you're a crafter or know somebody that is and would like to be on the show, give us a call at 879-4555 or you can call Cat7 um, or write to Cat7 at 1018th Street. That's it for our show. This is our 11th show. I'm so proud to, to have you on this show and I hope that people come swarming to your studio <laughs> now. And thank you. I am a, a, a great a admirer. Uh, admirer. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.